Welcome back. In this video, we are going to create a reducer for our login action. All right, so in the previous video, we created our action using create async tank. So how can we create a reducer for our login? So let's see how you can do it using Redux Toolkit. So the API we need is called create slice. So like I said, to so create slice here. Okay, so how can we do that? So here comes the logic. Always, we are going to map our action to the respective reducers, right? So now we have login action. We need to create what your login reducer, or I call it slices. So slice so this slide is going to generate our action type for us automatically so const uses slices uses slices is equal to create slice all right this one takes an object okay takes an object and the first one going to be the name of your slice or reducer and let's call this one users and this one must be unique all right so and also you need to pass in your initial values right your initial values always reducer must return some default value for now let's say off let me call this one let me see false okay so it's not login yet. All right, and then let's add users array. So users to so you can pass in any default data here. Users are numbers. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. All right. Let me make more sensible here. So let me call this one Ben. Let me call this one Joe. So now, for now, let's add this my initial values for now. Okay. So the next thing is you need to pass what is called extra reduces and this extra reduces is going to help us to map our actions to our reduces to cause the changes. So you provide what is called extra reduces and this is a function, right? A cover function like that. And in here, that is where the magic comes in, right? So in here, we have access to what is called builder. Right, so builder is going to help us to make the request or the builder will help us to determine how our state get changed. So for build for build for builder, let's before now let's let me continue for you to see what I'm I want to talk about. So here for this builder, we return an object, and here we can call our builder. And on that, we want to add our case. So what case do you want? Our case means what? Our action. So now, the action becomes our case. So you want to what? Call our first action called login user action. And guys, remember, because we are making HTTP calls, we need to handle three things. One is when it's pending. When you make the request, it doesn't give you the response automatically. So you call something pending state. So if you if you know some more about promises, this is how it works here because we have Redux tank. And then you call something fulfilled, right? So fulfilled means that when our request goes well, and the last is what when it's rejected, right? So we need to handle all these states in our application. That is why Builder makes our life easier. So here on login action first, let's comment here and call this one handle pending state here. Okay, so dot pending. So when it's pending, right, then you pass in your callback function and here we can add state to data to our state or make changes to our previous state so we have what is called state so this state gives us the initial state value here everything inside this initial value represents our state 
And then the next one going to be what? The action. The action that comes in, right? This action that comes in. So this action, the, the return value from this login user action is what we are returning from this function. And if you go back to our API, what you are getting back is what? It's what we are returning, right? So let's provide a nice password here. Okay, so now I've logged in successfully here. Okay, cool. So now on the pending state, we have this. So next, let's open that. And remember guys, for object, because it's objects is by reference, we can append what more data into this default state here, right? This default state here. So here, when it's pending, let's add state dot loading, right? State dot loading, or to be more um, generic, we can say user loading, right? So state dot user loading. So on a pending state, we want to add a property to it called true. So behind the scene, we are adding what we are adding user loading to this state when our request is pending right and that is all what you are doing next is let's handle errors here when it's loading there is no error here but let me take you let me show you one more the types of error that we are going to receive in our application we have two types of errors if you are more familiar with backend development we call something system error right and then we have one called application error that going to be the user interaction so for example let me demonstrate to you in the front end the api okay so for this api creation we have two types of errors so one going to be the application error or the user error so for example if i forget my password and i send the request as you can see i get the message this response is not an error to the application is our own custom errors so in our case we regard this one as what user errors we need to handle this one and it's different when i shut down my server and i log in as you can see i have another error called system error or server error so i need to handle all these things in my application in my reduces so here now I'm handling the loading to so what about what about errors here? So let me add one more property state dot user app error is false, it's undefined by default, and then state dot user server error user server error is also equal to undefined. So you can simply use um, app error and server error and you're good to go. So let's do that, right? Or you can make it app error and server error throughout, but the naming is up to you. So now I've handled the, what is called the pending state. So let's handle the, handle the success state here. And the same builder, dot add case and then the case here is what our login action dot fulfilled and here you call our cobalt function we have our state and action and then here we can now make changes to our state so here state dot success dot what login right so let's call this one login or up to you. So let me call this one user off. So what is coming back? Let me call this one user off. And I can receive this one in the front end. So user off. And the response coming back is one word action dot payload. Right? So if you console log action, we have the data on the payload for us. And then the same process, let's also call the user app error here. So let's copy of this one this error here okay let me do step by step so let's add on the for free state user loading is false because here we have the data so false and 
state the errors here. So let's copy all these errors where it goes on well, there is no error here, right? That is it. And then let's handle the rejected. So handle rejected state. The same process, builder dot add case and it's called login action and it's called rejected. And then your callback function, you have your state and your action, then we can map our state. So here you can guess that we don't have, we have the loading to be false, right? False is here. And let's get the actual error. First of all, let's check for the user app error. And for the app here, there's an error. That is a user error here. For example, the user refused to provide the right login credential. And that one is from, you can get that one data on action dot payload dot message dot message and for the server error is not from the message the same action dot error and we have dot message like that so the last thing is we need to what get the, re the, the reduces from this one so all you need to do is export this function, this function here, this particular function here. Okay, so export default and then user slices and dot reducer. And that is it. So the last thing is let's map these slices to our store. So let's go back to our store here. And now we have, let's import the slices. So import users reducer from the slash slices and users and then we have users slices and now here i can map and call this one users and call this one what user reducer so when i refresh my application i'm going to have an initial state by default where is it by default i have my initial state so let's check it out and see if i'm correct Let's refresh it, let's open it, and let's look at the state. And there we go, you see, I have users, and by default, I have this data. All right, so let's remove this default data here. I was trying to show to you for, so let's give it an empty this. Okay, so guys, this is how we create reducers for login user. So the next video, we are going to dispatch this action right inside our component to register or login a user.